Okay, the last couple days I've been cleaning out my beds and bringing rabbit manure and putting it in. So I've got uh, all the empty beds. I scraped out the bulk of the mulch, not all the mulch, but almost all of it. I should have done a better job on this one here, but in any event, um, I just came out and I put some powdered seven, granular seven in there, and then also some Job's um, organic fertilizer. And it's a lower nitrogen version like you would use for tomatoes and stuff. So I'm gonna mend that in with it all. So now I've got my electric tiller. If you're gonna use uh, raised beds, I highly recommend you get a simple little tiller like this because it's easy to handle. I've had this thing for many years. Just a yard machine, it's probably Home Depot or something. I don't think it was even that expensive. And I got a more heavier duty one out in the open yard, but uh, should be able to get quite a bit done today in the morning here. Try to get this stuff done in the morning because this is hot, hot, hot. Then I'll be ready to uh, start planting. That's the next step. So anyways, let me get to work. I had to pull out some of my eggplant and stuff i'm going to try to transplant that over on the side of the house i don't know how much longer i can get some eggplant but i need to have these beds for uh, some potatoes lettuce rutabaga collards you know all that kind of stuff start getting some things ready for the fall all right well let's get going so then get done by itself so i've been out here working on my raised beds and i've got probably more than half of them filled with rabbit manure and rototilled and uh, got three beds Two and a half beds fully planted. So I got cabbage in this one. I got rutabaga and lettuce in that one. And I got broccoli in this one. That's a lot of broccoli. I bought more and I shouldn't have because that's going to be a lot of broccoli. But I still got this bed to do. I got that bed to do. My green beans or pole beans are still producing. So I'm not doing anything with that yet. Actually, this one's rototilled. That one over there needs to be rototilled. And I got to clean up my tomato plants. I'm getting some kind of... Uh, fungus on the bottom of them give them a good spray so my chicks are now a week old and they are so much bigger they're thriving so well now they're actually hunting down bugs and stuff it's been so hot here lately it's only cool in the morning for a short time till that sun starts getting moving I'll have to get my tripod and set it out here amongst them this evening. Now if you want to see what a proper nest looks like, good golly Miss Molly, she must have had babies last night and there are a ton of hair she put in that thing. Everybody's been uh, popping out the babies lately, but it's been so hot, it's been super stressful on the mama, so we'll have to see how it works out. This one looks like it's got its nest ready, I'll give it a little more hay. Well, I've been trying to get everything planted. So in that bed right there, I've got uh, two different types of lettuce. And then I also have some rutabaga that's closest towards me. And then here's some cabbage. I think I'm going to get uh, some red cabbage or something next for this side. And I'll just keep this whole bed cabbage. And then I've got broccoli over here. Got a whole bed of broccoli. That's probably going to be way too much. I thought I'd give it a shot. And then I've got a whole bunch of spinach i got to plant. So i got to finish getting these beds ready. I might put the spinach here, I don't know. I gotta finish putting my uh, hoops up because I think I'm gonna put some shade cloth because it has been ridiculously hot out here. And I think the shade cloth will help a lot. And then my peppers just are producing like crazy because it's been so hot. I've been trying to pick more and more to get it off there so that plants can produce even more. But anyways, these uh, Tabasco plant, that was like the most prolific plant I think I've ever had. That's unbelievable how much this thing put out. Tremendous number of peppers on this thing. Even though I've been picking them, I probably have uh, a dozen pint-sized jars, and I think I even did a quart-sized jar for somebody. And remember, these are like eight times hotter than jalapenos. So I want you to see, my chicks are now just a little bit over a week old since I've received them. I picked them up on Friday and it's Saturday morning now. And you're starting to see these uh, Cornish rocks are outpacing the Rhode Island Reds. They're getting a little flighty now, which is kind of interesting. And uh, interestingly enough, they're eating a whole thing of food every day. Now, this is when I have to actually start restricting their food. In fact, I wasn't supposed to leave it out here last night. I just forgot I got to get my habit, new habit established where I've got to take the food away every night because these Cornish rocks will outgrow 
their bone structure. So you have to give them a chance to catch up. But it's unbelievable how big these things are already. Now I'm a little disappointed in Hoover Hatchery. They were supposed to send me more chicks this week. But uh, I never got a tracking number. So I called them on Friday. And go, oh no, we're not sending them until next Friday. Well, the problem is now I'm going to have little baby chicks versus uh, two week old chicks. And you can see how big these are. So that's going to cause me trouble for trying to maintain two different age of chickens so I'm gonna have to uh, probably graduate these outside the the little covering and then have the younger ones inside here or I'm gonna have to raise the other ones in my garage for a couple weeks to get them a little farther along but uh, this is gonna be frustrating having two different aged chickens Anyways, it's kind of interesting watching the growth of these. It's pretty phenomenal. So I got to get them both water and food because they've uh, pretty much destroyed their food here. I'll show you my rooster up front. He thinks he's tough stuff. He was uh, trying to get me again today. He'll circle around in behind you and try to jump on your ankles. You're not going to do anything now after I already kind of showed you who boss did, are you? <laughs> Even the Rhode Island Reds get after him. He's like, you ain't nothing. Look at him, he's cornered. <laughs> when I get my Rhode Island Red roosters up and running, I'm going to find a home for you, buddy. You need to get some with your own size. These hens tell you who's, who's in boss, who's the boss, not you. So last night was the first night that I took the food away, so I'm curious how hungry all these guys are going to be. I just put it in and the Rhode Island Reds attacked it first, which is kind of amazing. I thought these uh, Cornish rocks would have been all over it. That's funny, they still scratch when they're that young. why I like using these uh, feeders it's, it doesn't waste nearly as much as some of the other feeders I've used I do use a uh, medicated feed for the first uh, month I really expected the uh, Cornish rocks to be the ones in there eating away Man, are they growing. Hey, if you ever want to have some fun with chicks, this time of year we start getting these uh, stink bugs congregating everywhere on my log piles, on my window screens and things like that. And uh, it, it's a fantastic uh, fun thing to do is to capture several of those and bring them in here and throw them down to the chicks. The chicks do what I call tacaloco. One will grab it and run away and the rest of them will try to Take it from them. So it, it ends up being quite interesting. I'm sure they'll eat some small crickets too if I was to get some crickets. Every once in a while I'll go to bait shop and get them some. Yeah, they're, they're a little hungry. I'm surprised the rest of them aren't in here. Fun time. Still got a, another five days before I get my next batch of chicks. I'll have to come up with an idea for them. All right. Got to get back to work. Got to fill these guys' water up, get them ready for the day. They also love it when you refresh their water. Even at this age, when I jack the uh, 
the water up because they've grown up. They still dump chips in there and some of them get up on top while they're drinking and poop right in the water. It's kind of disgusting, but they're babies. They're going to get graduated to a five gallon waterer here shortly. In a 24 hour period right now, they're drinking about a gallon of water. Man, there's some crickets in here that are loud. I'm surprised the chicks haven't found them. I can hear it. Maybe it's outside. It's a feeding frenzy, I tell you. Look, I'm hungry. These things, when they get bigger, they will just sit in front of this. Uh, it's a goat feeder that I have. I'll have that thing full of food. I'll fill it up every morning and take it away at night. But the uh, they get so big and fat, some of them just sit there. They don't even move towards the end. Unfortunately, they're cute at this age, but they don't stay cute. Pretty soon they go through this stage where they get rid of their baby feathers, and they are ugly when the other stuff comes in. Not a pretty chicken at all. Sorry, babies, I had to fix that. I gotta block all routes of escape. I still had a couple escape yesterday. They end up undermining this area over here, so I have to throw more chips in there, but... Uh, they're getting so big now, it's going to be, uh, they're going to be graduating outside this anyways. Chicks are a lot of fun. I kind of wish I still had my grandkids here. They loved watching the chicks. All right, so here's something to think about. Uh, a week or so ago, I showed you I was cooking some ribeyes on the grill, and I looked in the uh, freezer, and I had some left over from that meal. So I took from my garden a couple bell peppers, sliced an onion, Got some mushrooms, and also I sliced some jalapenos into strips. And to top it off, my wife had made bacon this morning. She left the pan here with the bacon grease still in it. So guess what I've got? Bacon grease seasoned onions, peppers, jalapenos, and steak. I don't think that can get any better than that. We'll just call this the heart attack special, especially since it's a ribeye to begin with. Fantastic meal. You ought to think about, uh, you know, making new meals out of old stuff and uh, it's a good way to go. My dad taught me when I was young to do what we call slumgolian so here I'm just uh, reusing stuff. Alright, I hope you're having a great day. I wish you could smell this amazing. Alright, instead of steaks we got chicken legs and bratwurst. This is like one of my favorite things to cook on the grill. I love chicken legs and my grandson Loves chicken legs, but he's not here anymore, so I always take a picture and send it to him so that he knows what we did today. He also loves bacon about more than anything, too, so those two things, uh, of course, you can't really live on these, but that's what little kids like. He likes the caveman style, holding on to the drumstick and eating it. All right, just uh, trying to show you the way the Dobsons eat. Hey, babies. Hi, babies. So this morning I uh, refreshed their water, refreshed their food, and I had to bring the little doghouse lid out because they were jumping up on top of that, and pretty soon they'll be jumping over the top of this, but uh, I'm trying to keep them confined for a little while longer till my next group of chicks comes in. And then I'm going to collapse this thing down and move these guys out and put the young ones inside till they catch up a little bit. Look at the difference in size between the Rhode Island Reds and these Cornish Rocks. I mean, we're just a little bit over a week old and you can see how fast they're growing in comparison. All right, I just wanted to say, I hope you all are having a great day. I hope everybody's treating you well. Remember, do the best you can. God bless.